Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars, some of my favourite voices and people who are going on tour next year. There's a new type of tour, though. It's on the seas. There's a special one called Back to the 80s Cruise 2018, which takes place between the 6th and 13th of May 2018, starring Tony Hadley, Kim Wilde, Sarah Cox, Belinda Carlisle, ABC, Paul Young, Tapao, Cutting Crew, Mike Reed, and of course, Go West will be there as well. And I'm delighted to say the lead singer, Peter Cox, joins us now. How are you doing? I'm very well, mate. How are you? It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I was born in 1980, and it takes a while for the decade in which you're born to come back in fashion, because for a while it was a bit sort of passé. Now it's cool again. It must be a huge relief for you. (laughs) Yes, I suppose you could put it in those terms. It's certainly great to be working. So, yes, very grateful that uh, the song seemed to have stood the test of time. Was there a point when you realised people wanted to hear the 80s again? It seems to me sort of five or six years ago, people started putting on these huge 80s festivals. That's when it took off big time. I guess so uh, on a higher profile level, but um, I spent some time living in California and I came back to the UK in 2000 when my dad wasn't very well. And uh, I mentioned that because that's the time that I hooked back up with my partner in Go West, Richard Drummy. And we've been working ever since. So although, as you say, it may seem higher profile in the last five or six years, the so-called 80s revival has been going strong for some time. The great thing about any vocalist that can sing, and you have a terrific voice. I was listening to your stuff online yesterday, and and the richness of your voice and that sort of power that you've got behind it is never going to get old, and you've never stopped working because of that. It must be a relief. I think the ones who had the shtick, who had the costumes, the hair, and those sort of very tinny-sounding records, they're the ones that sort of fell by the wayside the quickest. There was a certain new wave style of singing, um, which I was never really a part of. I mean, that's kind of where the name for the band came around because uh, Richard and I were listening to what was at the time very unfashionable American West Coast music, Michael McDonald and Steely Dan and those kinds of artists. So I was less influenced by the punk movement and what came after that, the new romantic thing. So, I mean, I'm, I'm flattered that you think my voice is rich sounding. I'm a baritone in a world of tenors which is sometimes frustrating but um, as Richard says you know you go with what you've got so uh, yeah thank you very much I was noticing as well the reaction that you get from the audience I I don't know whether you've heard but I'm a deeply unattractive man what is it like to be a sex symbol I've no idea mate really Uh, you know I I always feel from my point of view that there's a certain comic element to uh, to me swinging my pants and uh, and hearing uh, certain sounds from the audience. So, I, I mean, I, I think you've got to keep your tongue in your cheek, really. I certainly don't take myself seriously on that level. That was going to be my next question. Did you ever lose yourself? I don't remember reading article after article of sort of debauchery and showing yourself up and making a fool of yourself in nightclubs. It must be tempting, and I'm sure it did happen from time to time, but you, you had a pretty blessed career PR-wise. You seem to have kept out of the nonsense. Well, that depends on your point of view. Certainly, we did keep out of the nonsense, um, but comparatively speaking, we were very low profile, um, which from a PR standpoint is never a good thing. So uh, uh, a lot of the time, I find that the reaction of people uh, can be that they, they don't know Go West. They don't know, they don't have an image that they can associate with the band name. It's only when they hear the songs, which is obviously a good thing, they say, oh yeah, I know this one. Oh yeah, I know that one too. Uh, which is great, you know, it's, but certainly in the day, it probably would have stood us had we been doing all the things that you mentioned, and, uh, but we never did that. For me as a radio guy, I mean, I must have played We Close Our Eyes 7,422,000 times, and then, of course, King of Wishful Thinking, which was another hit. For you, which is the biggest? Uh, am I sort of right with that those two are the biggest radio hits for sure? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, in 1985, we had four hit singles in the UK, so... Don't Look Down and Call Me, which are also Go West songs, uh, enjoyed some radio play at that time. Mm. But there's no question that uh, soundtrack of Pretty Woman with the song The King of Wishful Thinking has been uh, a wonderful thing for us. And that is uh, our best known song simply because as politically incorrect as it is, Pretty Woman is a movie that most of the female population would have seen at some point or mm. another. And, uh, and our song 
was the first song in the film and you get to hear a whole verse and a whole chorus which isn't always the way when you're associated with a film. And then we look to 1986, 85 was the sort of year of the hits for you, but 86 was Best Newcomer, so I suppose when you get the Brit Award that's some sort of affirmation, but then of course you've got the pressure of maintaining it and where do you go from there? Was that a great year for you or was it a struggle to wonder what do we do next? Um... It's a good question. There was a bit of both, really. Obviously, it was fantastic to win the Brit. Um, and as you say, that's the one award which is voted for by the public. So that was an affirmation, definitely. Um, but then we were reacting, Richard and I, against the way that we had been marketed because um, completely naively thinking that perhaps our first song would um, would go to the lower parts of the charts and we do some gigs and build up a following but partly because of the video for we close our eyes we found ourselves with a hit single and and then on the cover of smash hits with mascara and goodness knows what else all things that we had not planned for and hadn't seen coming uh, and we found that we had quite a uh, a poppy image which uh, which for better or worse we reacted against so we when we were writing the songs for our second album we wanted I think it was important to us to prove that we were real musicians and in inverted commas and all the rest of it and that was not necessarily the best direction to take so yes there was a degree of pressure does it ever become come normal for a grown man to be putting mascara on it must be strange <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as I say, this goes back to the, the, the conversation we were having earlier about uh, image. You know, we just didn't ever think about that. Um, mm. Even in the uh, in the run-up to making the video for We Close Our Eyes, we borrowed some clothes from various stores on the King's Road at the time and walked up and down in front of Godly and Cream while they were trying to decide what they thought might be a good look for the video. Didn't like anything that we had bought. And then for reasons I can still not explain, when I changed back into my street clothes, I was at that time wearing a vest under my leather jacket and, uh, and Godly and Cream saw that and said, uh, ah, yeah, okay, that's a, that's a sort of general... Marlon Brando in a mechanic sort of image that you know that they could relate to they could refer back to something in a film somewhere and they said good we'll go with that and that's more or less how we accidentally stumbled on that on that look for that video um where, and people still say to me today where's the vest and I can assure you that me in a vest today is not something that anyone really needs to see no I was going to say if they saw me in my vest all they'd see is man boobs it wouldn't go down very well with the record exec <laughs> put it that way let's talk about this cruise because um, it's a fascinating idea I know they're doing all different types now they've got musical ones uh, they've got very specific cruises for different people there's Disney cruises kids cruises gay cruises straight cruises couples cruises singles cruises and now they're doing back to the 80s cruise which will be great the only thing I worry about and I talk to all the entertainers about this is you can't escape your punters you're going to have to be around them for the whole week are you happy about that I think that uh, some effort is made to offer the artists a bit of privacy but uh, I just am back from my first cruise ever off the east coast of Australia to New Caledonia uh, and there was a, a, a bill of several artists there and although we might arguably be somewhat lower profile in Australia, the King of Wishful Thinking was a big hit there and it was not a problem on the cruise. In fact, um, not knowing what to expect, I had an absolute blast. Um, there's live music uh, all day long. There are several venues. I don't know if, if you've ever been on a cruise, but as I say, I hadn't, and I wasn't ready for the scale of the ship and the number of venues that there are. And you can see live music, all day long from lunchtime until the early hours of the morning uh, mm. and it was great i really enjoyed it and uh, i think that this one in may of next year is going to be a blast yeah talking of scale though we must be careful about those 24-hour buffets because i had to come back cargo from one once you've got to be very careful with this and the ladies find you delicious i don't want you eating the midnight buffet it's going to be no good for those vest shots do you know what i mean no that's right that's right but i must say actually and, and of course you're right the temptation is there but I lost weight on the Australian cruise, so there you go. Wow, it can be done. Um, it's an amazing lineup. I mean, we've got Kim Wilde, Tony Hadley, one of the greatest voices ever, Belinda Carlisle, a true star, ABC, Paul Young, fantastic, to Powell, cutting crew, Mike Reed, Sarah Cox. Now, remind me of her hits in the 80s. <laughs> She's a supporter of the era. 
don't give her a hard time. No, no, she's great. And of course, that Radio 2 show, again, has done no harm to people like you, your band, your music, and the era of, of the 80s. No, that's right. Well, clearly, that audience is still there because you know that that show would be shelved if people weren't listening to the music. So, mm. uh, yeah, long may it continue. I'm bound to say that, obviously. If we're going on the cruise just for you and just for Go West, how many songs do you get to sing? How long a set do you have to do? We're doing three sets, actually, and um, I think, without knowing definitively, that we'll be playing for about an hour each time. So you get the hits, hopefully you get a few surprises, and perhaps some less, of, less familiar Go West songs. It's the Navigator of the Seas, leaving Southampton on the 6th of May. It goes to Bill Bauer. 1099 you can get on the ship for. You can see the In Conversation chats with Mike Reed as well with all the stars, and you'll be there performing with all those wonderful 80s legends. Peter, thank you so much for your time, and have a wonderful cruise, won't you? Thanks so much, Alex.